Hi, Keith. Hi, hi, hi Steve. <laughs> you moved into a different room. You're normally confined <laughs> to the... Uh, you're not actually, you're normally in a cupboard in... He's got an upgrade. <laughs> upgrade, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and where's your twin today? She, she's, she's around. That was, <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be down in the middle. <laughs> I actually meant we know always last really to the table. Playing uh, drums and, yeah. uh, and something else. <clears throat> oh, no, the twins are going to arrive. They've, they've got star appearance a bit later on. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Victoria. Morning. Oh, I like Morning, okay? Yeah, I like your haircut. Thank you. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, there you are. John, I can see John there. Hi, uh. How you doing, mate? Good. Excellent. <laughs> Who's upset? Linda W. She's disappeared. She's just showing us her ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. There's a reason for oh, yes. that. <laughs> oh, oh, there she is. I can hear her. There is definitely a reason for that. <laughs> I think we'll leave it there then, shall we? Yeah, I think it's probably best. <laughs> Hi, Kit. Hello. Hi. Hi, kids. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, I think we'll um, make a start. Um, so if Karen can mute everybody. Um. So, Welcome to our service this morning. It's um, a harvest service, um, which will be a different kind of harvest service to what we've done in the past. But we are here to remember the amazing gifts that God has given to us. And our words, um, it, for hopefully you've got an order of service. Um, there's some things for you to say, lots of things to do in the service. Um, let's just spend a moment just to calm our thoughts and our minds from the busyness of the week and remember why we're here. Using the, the call to worship in the service booklet, Lord our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under your feet, all flocks and herds and birds in the sky and all the fish in the sea, all that swims the paths of the sea. Lord our God, how majestic is your name. When I was thinking about this service and thinking about what it means to be part of this creation, um, every, generally sometimes I have a song of the month and the song that is, keeps coming up in my mind this month is a song called So Will I. So what I'd like to do is um, I'd invite you to close your eyes and listen to these words. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. 
If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made, every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no sim syllable empty or void, for once you have spoken, all nature and silence follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch their breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say, every painted sky a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you sent it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. God of salvation, you chased down my heart through all my failure and pride. On a hill you created, the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lo lost your life, so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done, every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly choose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart eight billion different ways, every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I like you would again a hundred billion times but what measure could amount to your desire you're the one who never leaves the one behind as we remember those words and remember what god has given us and what god has done for us we'll sing our first song come now is the time to worship
I'm now going to hand over to Hilary. And please, can you all unmute yourselves for the harvest quiz? This is an opportunity to just focus your minds um, on harvest because that's what we're doing in a rather unusual way. Um, and just for fun, uh, we'll just lose control completely. And if you know the answer, just shout it out and wave and that'll wake you up. Um, so this is question number one. These are the names of which kind of fruit? Gala. Golden Apple. 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 I knew you'd all be with me on that one. So number two, you've got confidence to go on now. Which yeah. of these crops is a vegetable? <laughs> not oh, sorry. Tomato, rhubarb, banana, cucumber. Oh. What was the question? Which of these crops is a vegetable? Cucumber. 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 Rhubarb. 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 Rhubarb it is. Oh, oh yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Seeds. <laughs> and the cucumber has a seed. So if you said rhubarb, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, of course the five yes, fields I'm glad <laughs> Kathy Fivefield <laughs> did. Excellent. So number three. Name one of the most common arable crops in the UK. Maize. Right. Wheat. Barley. Barley. Oh, Anybody Wait. for the oats? Yeah. Wheats oh, and good. barley oats. Yeah, good. Excellent. Give yourself a clap. <laughs> Now, which when is the wheat usually harvested? Usually, September. August. Yeah, September. 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 Oh. September. Oh. Oh. Well done. Name one of the tools that the farmers used to reap in the old days oh. to cut oh. arable. Oh. 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 Well done. Oh. Oh. A sickle, perhaps, did I hear? Oh, I said sickle, yeah. Yes, good, or a reaper. Mm, That's not the grim really. one. <laughs> okay, so finally, you've done so well, we'll let you off without another 20 questions. What is this? Corn dolly. Corn dolly. Corn dolly, and anybody quickly can tell us what it was used for? Or is still, perhaps? The haystacks. Put on top of the haystack, that's not one of the answers I had, but I'm sure that would be ideal. Wheat. Good luck. Good luck, yes. Part of a harvest custom from ancient times to thank Mother Earth. It was often made of the last sheaf of the harvest and a symbol of fertility. And you keep it safe until the spring to ensure that the life goes on. Well done, everybody. Give yourself a clap. <laughs> Ready for harvest. Thank you, Helen. Okay, okay we're going to mute people yeah. again now. Okay. So we thought a little bit about um, harvest and the things that we uh, associate with harvest and now we're going to spend the time of uh, thanking God for those things and all you need is your hand okay you have five thing fingers well four fingers and a thumb okay let me see your your hands just so I know you're you're actually listening um, okay so what I want you to do is think of five things that you're thankful for okay one for each of those digits that you've got um, yeah um, and in a moment I'm gonna say uh, thank you and I want you to say out loud the thing that you're thankful for with your thumb and then we'll go through each of the digits does that make sense and I know that you're doing it on your own maybe we should have unmuted everybody again but that's okay didn't think about that okay so God we thank you for fruits and vegetables God, we thank you for water. God, we thank you for sunshine. 
God, we thank you for farmers. And God, we thank you for freshly mown grass. Thank you, God, for the wonderful world that you have made. Thank you for all the people of the world. Thank you for all animals and living creatures. Thank you for all the plants and the things that we can eat. Help us, Lord, to look after your world and everything in it. Help us to share the things that we have and to think about others who don't have as much as we do. And bless us and our families with your love today and always. Amen. If we're honest, we don't always treat the world or the people in it with the respect that it deserves. And so sometimes we need to say sorry for those times. So let's think, um, spend a moment of saying sorry to God. Lord God, forgive us when we are selfish and greedy, when we are wasteful of all the things that you have given us. Sometimes we forget to say thank you. Father, forgive us. Lord God, we often choose to ignore those who are struggling and lack basic provisions. Sometimes we ignore the needs of others. Father, forgive us. Lord God, in our weaknesses, we choose to live in a way that pleases us and not you. Sometimes we forget to live your way. Father, forgive us. As we say, we are sorry and ask you that you would forgive us and help us to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the God of grace, who loves all that he has made and in Christ welcomes home all who come to him, heal our brokenness, forgive our sins and return us to a life of justice, mercy and simplicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Andrew, who is going to bring our reading. The reading is from Matthew chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a, a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the 11th hour came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, friend, I'm not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a, a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who has hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord.
I want you to imagine that you're at a birthday party and they're handing out the slices of cake. The host presents you with two plates that you can choose from. One has a skinny piece and one has an extra large piece with extra icing. Which one would you choose? Now, if we're honest with ourselves, unless we're really on it with the diet, we'd possibly choose the bigger piece. My favourite cake is the Colin the Caterpillar cake from Marks and Spencers. And almost everybody wants one particular piece. That is the face, because it has the most amount of chocolate on it. One day, Jane and Will came in from school and wanted a snack. Their mum had baked a pie earlier in the week and there was just enough left for each of them to have a slice. Let's have a piece of pie, suggested Will. I'll get the pie while you get the glass of milk. When Will sliced the piece of pie, uh, one slice was much larger than the other one. Jane poured each of them a glass of milk and sat down at the table. Will brought the pie and placed the small pl- Uh, slice in front of Jane and kept the large slice for himself. Look what you've done, cried Jane. You gave me the small slice of pie and kept the big slice for yourself. Well, what would you have done? Will asked. Well, if I were serving the pie, said Jane, I would have given you the large slice and kept the smaller slice for myself. Well, that's what are you complaining about? That's exactly what I've done. Will and Jane both laughed and began eating their pie. Well, there are lots of times in our lives when things might not seem fair. And believe it or not, that's actually a good thing for us, sometimes. Sometimes we might feel that we don't deserve the things that happen to us. Well, in the gospel lesson today, there are some people who felt very upset over what something that had happened. Jesus told this parable, a special story with a meaning, about a farmer who hired workers for his vineyard. He agreed, agreed to pay the first person a, high, a certain amount, let's say 50 pounds for the work of the day. A little while later, he found another person who wanted a job and hired him for the same amount of money and then found another and another worker and let them start laboring as well. He even found someone who jumped into the job in the last hour of the day. The owner gathered everyone together at the end of the day and each worker received their 50 pounds. The first workers, understandably, were upset because they didn't get extra pay for working longer. But the owner said that he could do what he wanted with his money and everyone would get the same pay. In today's world, some, some, we sometimes worry a lot about things being fair. We think we earn or deserve the things we get. And we can get upset if we think we've been cheated or mistreated. Maybe you arguing about who gets the last biscuit in the tin or complaining that our brother's ice cream is bigger than ours are not actually the things that we need to get upset about. There are bigger injustices going on in the world that we should take note of. We are incredibly blessed in this country to be able to walk into a supermarket and buy what we want. We may not have much money, as much money as our neighbours, but at least we have a choice, a choice that we so often take for granted. How would you react if you walked into a supermarket and there was nothing on the shelves? We had a glimpse of that at the beginning of lockdown when people were bulk buying toilet rolls and eggs and sugar and flour. That was the experience that I had when I lived in Zimbabwe. There were times where we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. God knew what we needed and when we needed it. I've never met more generous people than those who share their last cup of flour or the little food that they have when someone arrives on the doorstep. And they, don't, they, they do it without grumbling or moaning or often being asked. Now the evangelist J. John tells this story of a man at an airport 
who had some time before his flight, so he buys himself a coffee and a bag of mini donuts. He looks around for somewhere to sit, and the only seat he can find is opposite another man reading a paper. So obviously before social distancing. He goes over and puts his coffee on the table, puts his bags down, takes off his coat and sits down. He takes a sip of coffee, opens the bag of donuts, takes one out, eats it and puts it back on the table. The guy opposite then stretches over, picks up the bag of donuts, takes one out and starts eating it and smiles. As you can imagine, the other man cannot believe what he's done. He cannot believe that he's just stolen one of his donuts. He picks up the bag of donuts, takes another one out, starts eating it and moves the bag closer to his coffee. While he's having a sip of the drink, the other man stretches over, picks up the bag, takes another donut out and smiles and then pushes the bag back. The other man still cannot believe it. He's stolen two of my donuts, he thought to himself. The man gets up to leave and the other man thinks to himself, well, it's about time the donut thief. He puts on his coat, picks up the ba his bags and then picks up the bag of donuts. He sees that there's only one left, breaks it in half, puts half of it in his mouth and the other half on top of the bag on the table. He smiles, waves and walks off. After a while, he looks at his watch and it's time for him too to leave. He gets up, puts his coat on and bends down to pick up his bag and finds on his bag is his bag of donuts. He was complaining that the man was stealing his donuts when actually the other guy was sharing his donuts. The point is very simple. God owns all the donuts. Every week, God gives us a bag of donuts, and inside there is are 10 secular donuts. How we spend our money, our donuts, reveals what is important to us. How would we feel when God asks us to give one of our donuts away? When we give one of our donuts away for something that is sacred, something that is God-filled, something that God asked us to do, we always find that we have, there's always enough for what we need. God is good and generous, and he has given us, most of us, more than what we need. The question is, what will we do with God, what God has given to us? Will we share it with those who don't have as much, or will we be greedy and keep it to ourselves? We all have a choice to make with the things that we have. Even if we have very little, we can still share with those who have less. So this harvest, I know that we are not presenting our um, produce or our gifts to the front of church, but I'm gonna encourage you to take some of the things that you might have taken to a harvest festival and put them in the box outside the vicarage for the food bank, because that supports people who have less, people who cannot afford a full meal for their family. And later on, um, Steve's gonna give us an update on what the food bank is doing and where it's at. Let's just uh, spend a moment of quiet thinking about what we can do with our donuts. And then I'm gonna hand over to Rachel for our prayers. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Heavenly Father, for you have...
provided us with everything that we need for life and health. May we use the ample resources you have gifted us with wisely and fairly, neither hoarding nor squandering these gifts, but sharing them with all. Father, you have not just given us good things, but the senses with which to appreciate them. Hearing, smell and taste. Let us use our senses wisely. You give us sight, not just literal vision, but spiritual perception to be able to see the world as you see it, Lord. So Lord, open our eyes to the material lack that others have. Don't let us merely observe and feel helpless, but instead ask, what can I do to alleviate poverty? Help us bring vision to those who can't see your goodness because they can't see past their difficult circumstances. When we see on the news suffering around the world, may it inspire us to pray for change and to fight injustice. Shake us out of our comfort zone and drive us into compassionate action so that others see Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You give us the sense of touch. Lord Jesus, you often communicated through touch and here we are having to socially distance and feeling the lack of human contact. As we hear of a rise in COVID-19 cases and repeated imposed lockdown restrictions, particularly in the north of the UK now, we know that this will bring further disconnect between people. Please be with those who have endured months of social isolation, who may be feeling unbearable loneliness and heartache. Lord, help us to find new ways to connect, connect which do not put others at risk. May our words and actions be that bit more affirming, bringing hope and comfort. And may your spirit touch those suffering and bring healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You have given us ears to hear with. And Lord, we appreciate our auditory hearing, but give us the ability to hear the cries of those who make no noise. Help us to hear what your spirit is wanting to say to us. Every day we hear bad news reports of acts of violence, harsh and unjust regimes, economic instability and political wrangling. But help us not only to listen to the negatives, but to the good things that we hear, stories of kindness, hope, justice and change. Thank you that we can hear the praises of your people, which reminds us of your sovereignty and your power in the world. Thank you for the gift of singing, for being able to praise and join in online from all corners of this community. May there be a sense that our prayers and songs are filtering over our parish, blessing those who are not even tuned in. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, you've given us the gift of smell, but we hear of many who have COVID-19 whose sense of smell has now been lost. We pray for recovery, for healing, and for those who are struggling with this and other more devastating side effects of the virus. In the scriptures, the prayers of your people are likened to bowls full of incense rising up to you. May our praise be a sweet smelling offering to you. May our attitudes during these strange times be such that we unknowingly bring the fragrant aroma of Jesus Christ into the lives of people who do not yet know you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, you've given us the sense of taste. And at harvest time, we thank you, God, for the abundance of your bounty here on earth. You're a God of generous blessings, not just providing the basics, but a splendid variety. Forgive us when we become dull to all that we have. Forgive our gluttony when we take more than we need. Forgive us our complacency when that we know that others go without while we fill up our recycle bags with food waste. Help us to strive to feed the hungry, 
not turning away, but towards those who cannot taste what we taste. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Finally, we bring to you all those in our parish and our community who are suffering or unwell in body, mind or spirit. In a moment of silence, we pray for individuals we know who are in need of your healing touch or your spirit's comfort. And so we offer you all our prayers, those spoken aloud and those we express silently. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as an act of unity and obedience, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. Now I'm going to sing our final song, which um, is a, a very popular harvest song, but also um, it, it does talk about ploughing and uh, scattering the seed. So it's we're remembering that the harvest is planned years, months in advance. Um, yeah, I don't know if that helps. Well, we plough the field and scatter.
thank you to everybody who put all the music and things together for this morning. Look at the world with eyes of love and hear its cries with ears of concern. Mm. And then go into the world as those who don't just stand there, but do something. For we are the children of God. May God be with us forever. Christ be our friend and the Holy Spirit our guide. Um, Steve, can you unmute yourself? I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how the food bank is getting on, what they're up to. There is some exciting news there, isn't there? There is indeed, yes. Yeah. Yes, well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody's faces. Um, yes, things are uh, happening with the food bank. Um, first of all, if you remember back to when Amanda joined us, Amanda Stone joined us for uh, uh, one of our services ooh, probably a month or so ago now. Um, she was saying that the uh, warehouse where they are now, next to the Civic Centre, um, was, was being taken away from them probably in February by the council because the council are going to be turn it, turning it into a medical centre, which is good in itself. But the problem being is that uh, it was going to leave the food bank homeless. Uh, which is not what we want, of course. So anyway, they have found a place. They've found a warehouse. Uh, it's near Bromley Court Hotel. I'm sure most of you know where that is, but uh, North Bromley-ish way somewhere. Um, and uh, they've got a five-year lease on it, and it's costing them £30,000 a year, which actually sounds really ridiculously expensive but actually is quite cheap because they thought they might have to pay at least double maybe even triple that per year so they are quite pleased of course they've got to find the money for it but uh, they are trusting in god for that um and this is going to be happening over the next uh, few weeks as they trans every transfer things over from the uh, present warehouse over to the new one so that's really exciting news um, also, what is happening, um, and I, I will use this very advisedly, as lockdown is slowly starting to open up, um, more of the centres that they had opened uh, in the past is becoming to become online. So they, uh, people are going to be able to go to their local food bank centre to be able to collect food. So instead of delivery drivers going out and perhaps delivering a week's worth of food, they will be able to go along and, uh, as they were used to doing folk, picking up uh, two or three days worth of food. Now, of course, that's not always possible because some people are still sh shielding uh, and obviously those that are frail uh, might not be able to get there. So they are trying to devise a new way of being able to do delivery. Um, uh, and as you know, uh, Linda and I are on and uh, 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 Alan Mitchell as well is also on that delivery rotor um, so that um, although we may not be called upon to deliver as much as we did before there will still be some deliveries taking place. Now of course the biggie is is that things are starting to shut down again as, as Helen's already said in the in the north and uh, northeast and uh, northwest uh, as far as uh, Birmingham, Wolverhampton and all around there and to be quite frank I don't know whether you saw the, uh, the pictures of those that uh, are, were enjoying themselves up the West End and in Covent Garden on Friday night. You can't but think that this is rapidly coming to, to, to our neck of the woods and, uh, and it's going to happen, I, I, I fear. So we might um, obviously start to get tighter restrictions, which again will mean that uh, the food bank is still going to have to adapt once more. Um, so please, please, please carry on praying for them, all that they are doing. Uh, they're working really, really hard, especially Amanda and Hannah and, and all those that go in to, to prepare everything, uh, that get all these stuff uh, uh, um, coming through on the computer so they know who to, uh, who's all the food is going to, uh, all the referrals that come in. 
and of course those that are going out delivering because uh, you are taking things to people's doors and there's always a risk involved. Uh, now with Harvest, and, and I have to say folks, you guys are really, really, really generous. You really are. And, and, and of course the story that we've had today is all about a generous God, no matter whether you are first uh, working or whether you are the last, his generosity outflows and your generosity has been amazing to the food bank. Um, and so um, I'm not necessarily asking you to go far beyond the, than you already give, but if you can help a bit more in some way, that is that would be amazing. As Helen's already said, the uh, the black box is outside of the outside the vicarage, and if we can fill that up every day, then I can take it down to them and to to the food bank. Um, but what I would ask is please no fre fresh produce because they can't use that. It has to be tinned or, or you know, all the stuff that we have that's on the list, but not fresh produce that perhaps at uh, harvest time we would normally uh, bring in. What also I would add, if there's folk that would like to give and got stuff to give, but actually can't physically get here themselves, fully understandable, give me a call and I'll come and pick it up from you, all right? Um, but please don't make it on a Friday because I'm probably not around, all right? So if you can't get here, but you, you want to give and you can give in some way, then um, uh, please do give me a call, all right? And just to add, if it's, and it is easier for some folk to, to be able to give, to give cash, to be quite honest, um, that would help not just in uh, uh, the food bank buying stuff that they're perhaps short of that's not coming in, but also help with able to pay for the, uh, uh, the, the, the new warehouse. If you go online, and I think that it's in our new sheet, but you can go online to give financially as well. So, uh, and um, of course, if, if you are working, uh, you can uh, um, give the tax bit on there. So please don't forget to do that. Um, hope that gives you a bit, bit of an idea what's going on, but for uh, foremost, please continue to pray for the food bank, the work that they do, and importantly, actually for those that, uh, that receive as well. Uh, when I go and deliver stuff on the doorsteps, uh, people are so grateful um, and, uh, and so happy. Um, the other day I, I delivered and <laughs> there was a little girl running around and, and her eyes lit up and she just said, oh, great biscuits. We take that for granted. We can just go to the cupboard and, and grab, a, uh, grab a biscuit, a fig roll or a chocky bicky or whatever it may be. For some, that's not so easy. So um, thank you for your generosity uh, and all that you do. Cheers. Helen. Just a couple more um, notices. Um, they are all on the, um, the notice sheet um, on the good news email. Hopefully you've all received that. Wednesday at half past 11, we have uh, a midweek reflection and prayer. And then the church will be open from three till um, seven during that day for private prayer um, and then next Sunday um, a said communion service in the church sorry you carry on. I've got something to add okay um, a said communion service at nine and then zoom at ten um, there are lots of things for the diary uh, for future um, thingies for, that doesn't make sense um, for, for future dates for the diary um, uh, bits and pieces is on the 30th of September um, if you haven't seen the messy church videos they were uploaded yesterday it's all about God versus water um, lots of exciting things that happened lots of things happening in the diocese please do look at the good news email um, and I'll stop before I start waffling even more. Steve, back to you. I, 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 to break I, my, my apologies, I put you off. <laughs> what I wanted to add was that, because uh, I weren't sure whether it was going to say, uh, obviously Rachel, and we can see Rachel there. Hi Rachel, hi Adam, uh, is being ordained next week, next Saturday. Uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a strange 
to be in the cathedral there for, for her and for Adam and for those else that are being ordained because there's only 30 people in total allowed from, from the bishop all the way down. So normally you would have, well, you'd have a hundred in there mm. uh, and everybody there supporting the person that is being ordained. And, uh, and I'm sure that we would have had somewhat of a large contingent of our own there supporting Rachel. And of course, the rest of her family and friends and those that have been supporting her uh, through this, uh, uh, her discernment and her time of preparation through to ordination. Um, so although that can't happen in that format, it will be on Facebook because the diocese is uh, streaming in it live. Um, quite all the details they haven't mm -hmm. told us all yet, but uh, I'm sure they will do in time. But the main thing is, is that uh, it'll be really good that if you are available from 11 o'clock uh, next Saturday, if you go onto Facebook via your computer or your, your phone, you don't have, I'm told, you don't have to have a Facebook page or anything. You can just go onto Facebook and then look up for the, uh, it's the Church of England uh, um, Diocese of Rochester. So C O of E Diocese of Rochester, and then you will find their page and you should be able to be able to watch the service. I think you, if you go on your computer, you can do it via their website. Okay, I think I've got that right. Search around, uh, but you should be able to get there. But it'd be great if we can just watch it there to support Rachel and to support uh, everybody else that is being ordained as well. Uh, because normally, as I say, there will be hundreds of people in the cathedral. Uh, so it would be really good to be able to do that. Saturday, 11 o'clock. I'm sure you can get on the page just a bit earlier. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for joining us this morning. Um, Karen is now going to send us into our breakout rooms. You will need to unmute yourself, uh, please. Uh, I'm